Uh, welcome to Medicine Handy Point. Today our topic is to discuss the history taking in a patient presenting with weight loss. So let's discuss what is the weight loss. Now if you see weight loss is actually significant only if there is more than 5% of body weight loss in one year. So if there is 5% of the body weight loss in one year, that is called a significant weight loss. Next question is to ask whether the weight loss is voluntarily or involuntarily. Our focus is on involuntary weight loss. Involuntary weight loss will need now further workup. Next question, which is very important, is to ask about the loss of appetite. It will help us differentiate weight loss with preserved appetite and weight loss with loss of appetite. So there are different duties. Patient with weight loss with preserved appetite means they are either having uncontrolled diabetes, they are having hyperthyroidism, they are having malabsorption or few chromocytoma. Weight loss with loss of appetite means very sinister causes like malignancy, severe renal cardiac uh, respiratory fa fa uh, failure, uh, esophageal and du gastrointestinal diseases means they when they eat they get pain so they don't eat at all, uh, depression and HIV. So these are uh, differential based on weight loss with loss of appetite or no loss of appetite. Now, the second thing is now we have now to systemically ask question relating to diseases which can cause weight loss. So first we will start with GI problems. So ask about dysphagia if the patient is having any problem swallowing, then ask about any postperinatal pain. Postperinatal pain lead to weight loss by uh, making the patient not eat at all. So there are three three differential for postperinatal pain. One is gastroduodenal disease like peptic ulcer disease, um, pancreatitis and gut ischemia. So these three conditions leads to postperinatal pain and the patient then avoid eating and leads to weight loss. Next is to ask about the diarrhea in the context of malabsorption. Ask suppose is the patient is having any diarrhea for how long and then ask about steatotoria and other malabsorption features like bleeding from the guns, purpura, or bone pains, anemia, and stuff like that. So it will give us clue whether the weight loss is due to malabsorption or, or not. Or ask about constipation uh, with blood in it in context of uh, GI malignancy. Also ask any lymph node enlargement in neck. Uh, which can occur in GI malignancy um, leading to supra left supraclavicular uh, supra lymph node enlargement. Then ask about the serious problems like heart failure leads to cardiac anorexia, intermediate claudication in the context of gut ischemia. If the patient is having intermediate claudication, maybe the patient is having gut ischemia. Then ask about COPD. COPD causes weight loss. Uh, just like emphysematic patient, they are very emaciated. Ask about uh, TB uh, symptoms like cough, sputum, with blood, weight loss, night sweats, and contact with TB patient. Then once we were done, then ask about any renal issues, any renal failures, dialysis, um, stuff like that. Endocrine problems, very important. Uncontrolled diabetes can lead to weight loss. Hyperthyroidism uh, can lead to Addison disease, can lead to weight loss. Then ask about psychiatric problems like depression can lead to weight loss. Medication, there are some commonly used medication which can lead to weight loss. These are SSRI, these are metformin, theophylline, leudopa, which is used for Parkinson's disease and digoxin, which is used for heart failure. So ask about these medication history as well. I hope you like the video and please subscribe to the channel.